she's always been in a spot. But this season in particular, what do you think it's going to be like for her knowing that even more people now are going to be watching because they know she's going to be in the WNBA soon enough and they're looking forward to that? Yeah, there has been a lot of, um, a lot of attention on page since, um, since high school, actually, <coughs> since before she even got to UConn. But uh, she tries her best to not let it um, be as much of a, uh, a burden as it can be. Um, her, her willingness to accept that responsibility and what she has to do for our team. Um, those two things, I think, are going to help her. She's more concerned about what she has to do for our team and how she can help our team reach our goals. Um, I'm sure there'll be periods, there'll be times during the season when it becomes overwhelming, either in a positive sense because she's doing so great or in a negative sense because she's struggling. She's going to get both at some point. But she's you know, pretty good at managing that. Uh, but we're, we're, we're going to ask a lot of her, contrary to what maybe is out there with our team, I've said this to our people back home, we, she's playing with a lot of really, really young players. And so that's going to be a real challenge for coaching staff and for her. Um, and because we're playing with a lot of young players, she wants to be on the court all the time. And I know I can't afford to have her on the court all the time. Um, but I know she's deserving of it. Um, but I certainly don't, don't think that, um, you know, we should be adding to the, you know, it's all page all the time all over the country, which is want to happen with today's culture. How much do you think the players benefit from having her and the fact she takes on a lot of herself? It seems to be so team perfectly. <clears throat> yeah, the players benefit uh, by having uh, by having a safety net. Um, you know, yesterday we were we, we were playing and we we had the scrimmage a little bit among ourselves and we went about five or six minutes and each bucket that we got, Paige didn't get any of them. And it was a great sign because they always look to her and they need to stop looking to her as often as they do. And yesterday was a really good example of that. But when it comes right down to it, that's who they're going to look at and that's who's going to have to carry them. Um, and there's no getting away from that. How would you compare the dynamic of last year's team to this year's team? Um, we haven't, you know, obviously Hart replacing Nika and Aliyah is difficult. You know, they're two, uh, you know, two pieces of our, uh, you know, Final Four team that can't be replaced. So the dynamic changes just by losing the two of them. Um, our our incoming freshmen are going to be really, really good. Um, maybe not as good as Aaliyah and Paige were in, in April, you know, but they're going to be really good. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but we're going to be a different team out on the floor simply because we have different pieces to work with. Um, so I'm hoping that we start to find our identity, you know, sometime in November, Coach, end of November. Coach, you added, speaking of freshmen, you added the top freshman in Naismith High School Player of the Year in Sarah Strong. Mm -hmm. What's up to you so far about her on and off the court? Uh, Sarah off the court is... Uh, very, um, very introverted, very shy, very uh, studious. You know, she wants to know, she wants to be sure. She's uh, very cautious. And she started out in September, uh, early October, being the same on the court. And the last two weeks, there's been a more... Sarah the Sarah basketball player that got her all those awards and I, I can honestly say that uh, uh, she's probably uh, as impressive as any freshman that we've had uh, in a long long time with all the things that she's capable of doing on the court um, so I'm excited because every day she does something I haven't seen before 
uh, fr from her. Um, I'm anxious. I'm anxious every day to go to practice to see, you know, what's the next step that she can take. Little baby step, but the next step. You wanted her to define her role for you this season. Is she starting to do that for you in practice? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's found... She's found her role already. Her role is uh, every time she gets the ball, try to make a make a play. And very rarely do you do you have freshmen come in where you're asking them to do that. So we need a big rebound. I expect her to get it when she's on the court. You know, we need a we need a pass to a shooter. I expect her to make it. You know, uh, we need a defensive play. I expect her to make it. We need a big three right now. I expect her to get it. So it's a lot to put on a freshman, but that's what we did with Paige. So it doesn't matter. We've been down that road before, and you wouldn't ask anybody to do those things if they couldn't do it. You know, when you went to go see her play, did you sense that, that she had that kind of thing? Um, you know, and, and, and being completely transparent, when Jamel went to this, like, back gym where nobody was. There was only one person watching her play. I think it was Nikisha Sales, who may have been watching somebody else. I don't know, but Sarah was playing, and Jamel came back and said, I saw this ninth grade kid. It's going to be really, really good. Just something. You know, she just saw something. So I went down there right away, you know, and we watched, and all you saw was this young kid who had a knack for doing the things that people have to learn to do. And she already had them. You know, the way she saw the floor, you know, how she finished around the basket, her just non-rushed, casual kind of approach to the game where all the great players have the ability to slow the game down somewhat. Um, and each year, it, yeah, it, it, it became... For me, after her sophomore year, during her junior year, it became if we get if we get if we get Sarah to come into our program, we will significantly change the, the trajectory of our program. Yeah, well, coach, with, with Paige Becker is playing in her final season, what, what can the players like? What can the players have and see Paige Becker's play college level basketball in UConn going to expect this season as she has her farewell tour? Anybody that's watched her play will know that, you know, when Paige was a freshman, there was nobody better in the country than Paige. Obviously, she got every National Player of the Year award. And then she kind of disappeared from the spotlight um, because of some injuries. But if you look at our Final Four team last year and how we got there and uh, that we were two points away from playing in the National Championship game, if you know, that was a testament to just how, you know, how much that kid can do for a program, a team, and how far she can take you. Obviously not by herself, but you know, putting a player like like Paige on your team automatically makes you a national championship contender. And, and so that's the you know, whatever people want to see, you know, they're gonna see. You know, that's the way the world is today. If they want to see, hey, she's the best guard ever to play basketball, that's what they're gonna think. Because she's gonna show you that. If they want to see, hey, she's overhyped, they're going to see that too. So it is what it is. You know, she's going to play great. And she's going to have her unbelievable moments and she's going to have some down moments. Um, but I think Paige is, uh, Paige is somebody that everybody's going to want to watch. Unfortunately, I wish she was, you know, playing with a much older group. I wish she was playing with a, with a more experienced group. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Yeah. Oh, I was, yeah, I was pointing over there. Do you know, when, when you say that someone you thought could change the trajectory of the program, yeah. I mean, for a program that's been in the final four in 17, 18 years, yeah. that's, not, you don't, that's not something I imagine you've said. Before. Yeah, you know, when, when you say that, you, you, it's not like we've been losing all the time and now this is going to change. <laughs> I don't mean that kind of trajectory. I mean that... You're, you know, for the last couple of years, you've been, for whatever reason, you're this far away. So a player like that can help you close that gap. But what I really mean is that's a four-year 
being able to close the gap. That's not like a one and done, close the gap this year and then leave. Like it would be, let's say, if this was men's basketball. So this is an opportunity to close that gap for four years in a row and keep it closed. So because otherwise, you know, you see programs around the country now, even if they do get to the highest level, it's, it's hard to stay there on a regular basis. And she's one that can provide you surround her with other people. She's one that can keep you there. Coach, you know, re- we obviously- Hold on a second. Go ahead. You know, just re- related to that, you talk, You wish Paige were surrounded by older players, yeah. but the numbers have been a thing where you've had, because of injuries, you've had to ask right. more of people to do, you know, than you necessarily expected to in October. Do you feel like in a numbers game, this is a team that allows you to throw more potential solutions and different problems over the course of the year? Yeah. As we grow and get better during the course of the year, you know, uh, uh, right now, uh, we don't have everybody back from, everybody's in a different stage of uh, coming back. And so, you know, we don't have AZ full time yet. We've got her quite a bit of time at practice, but not full time. Uh, we don't have Caroline back. Uh, Aubrey's not back. So, we're, Yana Patterson is on hold. So, we've got some pieces that are still on their way back. But what we do have every day of practice is we probably have nine players who can all contribute when they step on the floor. And it's just a matter of now finding the pieces. Here's the problem. The problem, we have nine players that all can contribute. The big, the big thing is they contribute really good when they're on the floor with Paige. So we got to find a way to be really good when she's not on the floor. And I think that's where, you know, maybe Caitlin can help and KK, you know, and and it's really important that we get AZ back because if we could get in a situation that whenever Paige is not on the floor, AZ can take on that, you know, because mm-hmm. when Paige wasn't around, AZ was unbelievably dominant until she got hurt. Then Paige has been dominant without AZ. I, I want to see if they can do that together which I think they will, but then it's a a comfort level that we can remove one and not, whereas last year we had to play Paige almost 40 minutes every night. And I don't know that you can sustain that, but we won't have to do that this year. I hope. If we do, we've got some issues. Yeah, Coach, um, obviously this year UConn got selected to be in the Women's Championship Classic at the Barclays Center. I mean, when you found that out, that announcement, what are the overall thoughts? how will everything you just say describe the games like that this season? Yeah, anytime we get a chance to play in an event, you know, where there's a lot of other good teams, and especially an event here in, in New Jersey, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's things that we've done uh, for the last 30 years where uh, we feel like we can elevate the game, we can bring even more attention to the game than has already been there. Uh, there are three other really, really good teams in, in, in the, you know, in the event. So I'm expecting, uh, you know, the, the environment at the at Barclays, you know, during the WNBA Finals, um, was incredible. So I, I know that the building has the potential to be, you know, that uh, that kind of spectacle. So I'm looking forward to it. Do you get any added sense of urgency yeah. since it is Pages last year to? I mean, you're going to keep bringing in new, better, play, good players, but is there any added sense of urgency? Um, yeah, probably, uh, certainly on her part. Right. I think she feels it. I think she, uh, she's at practice. She's doing, she's doing some things in practice that uh, that haven't happened much in the last four years that she's been there, three that she's played, that she's played. Uh, she's not, she's not passing up any opportunity to take advantage of uh, what's happening on the floor that benefits her and us. Whereas in the past, she might defer to you or to you and just let it go. And I don't see that happening uh, either on the defensive end, on the offensive end. She's just taking on this, uh, I don't want to leave any stone unturned, right? 
So I think the urgency is more on her part. Uh, I don't want to add to that, you know. But uh, I, I'm thinking that as the, as the weeks go on, the younger players are going to get caught up in that urgency. And that's either going to scare them, I don't want to screw this up, or it's going to elevate them. And if she's, you know, like we've been down this scenario before when we had D, right? We had a lot of really good players graduate. D came back, two freshmen in the starting lineup, two other guys that had never started before, and she's out there with them. And, and there's some there's some growing pains. And But, the again, I go back to the confidence that you have from knowing you have somebody like her on the floor. Um, that's... Ultimately, that's what's going to get us, you know, get us to the next spot. I wish you better. What would it mean? What would it mean for Paige Beckers to have a national championship in her career? Say that again. Caitlin, you mentioned Caitlin Chen earlier before. What does she bring to the table that you felt like you guys really needed, and how have you liked her so far? Um, I've loved her being here uh, because she's she's an unbelievable competitor. You know, she's a really tough physically. She's tough mentally. Uh, she, she has an aggressive mentality. She's used to winning. Um, her, she's in that transition period right now from, I said this earlier, am I a rookie or am I a veteran? I'm sure if she was still at Princeton, she would feel like an assistant coach. But all of a sudden, stepping into a new team, it, it's taken her a little bit, and then obviously having Paige. So she's more open now than she has been, and uh, you can see the difference in our team. How do you feel like uh, Carla prepared her to play for you? Um, well, I think what Carla did was um, more than anything teach her how to be coached because she doesn't mind being coached and she looks you right in the eye when you talk to her she acknowledges everything um, there's never there's never any excuse for anything that happens she takes full responsibility um, every every drill everything she does is game pace so uh, she paid attention and Carla did a fantastic job with her. Um, I, I'm sure. I'm sure there are things that I've said in practice that may be new to her that Carla didn't say. I'll find out what they are soon, but so far she's still coming to practice every day. Coach, you you uh, you mentioned NIL. Absolutely need to fix. Do you have any suggestions? <laughs> How to fix it? Yeah. Uh, the NIL part? Um, well, or, or, the, or the portal. Well, the, you know, the NIL part, I think, is, uh, I think it's a test. It, it's a test for whether people are full of shit or whether they're serious. All right, so. It's a test for do we keep the charade of student athlete and amateurism or do we call it what it is, you know, semi-professional pay for play sports. So either keep the charade of student athlete, which, you know, teams wouldn't be going 3,000 miles to play conference games if it had anything to do with student athlete welfare. That's number one. So we obviously through that in the garbage can. So let's just call it what it is. We're going to pay these guys to play basketball or play play football or play them to play, you know, any sport at a university. And then let's be, make it a business and figure out how do we manage this business. Other sports have done it. Pro sports, they've done it. They sign kids to contracts and you're bound to your contract. And let's honor the terms of the contract. Let's do it. We already got kids holding out. Right? You already got guys playing and going, I ain't playing anymore until I get more money. So we become professional sports. Let's say it and let's act it. Right? And let's stop the charade. The portal, 
How about we teach kids how to make a commitment and stick to it? All right, I get it. You want to leave. Fine. Leave. No penalties. How many times do you get a chance to leave? No penalties. Coach can leave anytime he wants. I can. I have a buyout. That's a great idea. Let's sign kids to a contract. And let's put a buyout in. Let's make it a business because that's exactly what it is. That would fix it. And let's have a salary cap, which I think this is this 20%, you know, whatever it is. I think that's what it is, right? So they're getting close, but they got to start calling it what it really is and not be ashamed of it, right? The kids aren't ashamed of it. Hey, you student athlete, you an amateur? Yeah, I am, but you get paid a lot of money. I know, let's not talk about that, but I, I like it. How's KK doing? KK? Yeah. Uh, KK's KK. She's always been that way, and she'll <laughs> always be that way. And uh, so whenever you see her, uh, you know the beauty that we have now? Kids can't fake injuries. So when a kid goes down, you know, and whether it's they got, you know, like Yana, whether they slammed into somebody's shoulder or a KK yesterday making a cut and her sneaker going like this, it's all on film. We have it right there. We look at it right away. And so, um, you know, when she said, oh, this, you know, okay, so let's take a look and see what it is. And um, it's not... It's not going to be like two days, but it's not going to be long. Gino, at the final four in April, the discussion started with you and Don and a few others. Is this the year when the WNBA surpasses in prominence the college game the way the men's NBA has long surpassed the college game in prominence? And I wonder for you, having watched this year and as much as the WNBA grew and all that, whether you think that's now finally happened? Um... Whether the WNBA has surpassed college, is, 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 maybe not has yet, but yeah. is will it? Get it on saying? the way. Is it on the way? Um, well, I would hope so. At some point, I don't know that that's the case yet, uh, but I would hope so. Uh, I think they have as many issues as we do that they have to get cleaned up, and I think that um, the more exposure the more people are paying attention, the more, uh, the more you have to be better, and that forces you to be better. So I think they learned a lot this summer about what the reality is when that many people are paying attention. Um, and I think at the college level, that same thing is going on. More and more college programs are getting a lot of attention, and they're starting to realize there's a price to pay for that. Um, but as more and more good players come into the league, I think they'll continue to make tremendous strides. Me, I was not a big fan of that game the other night. I thought it sucked, you know? I mean, I watched professional basketball teams score 30 points in the first half. So everybody's jumping up and down. The rest of the series was absolutely phenomenal. To me, that game was, was shitty. And it's not the player's fault. Right? You got 40 minutes and you give those players six fouls. What do you think they're going to do with them? Take it up with Cheryl. <laughs> okay? <laughs> right? Yeah. I used to laugh yeah. all the time. I said, you know, you're playing 40 minutes, the same number of minutes as we're playing, and you're giving every player an extra foul. Yeah. You give Diana an extra foul. What do you think she's going to do with it? <laughs> so now you got 10 guys out there to get an extra whack. Yeah. And then you got officials that are letting them do it. Yeah. You get exactly what you got in that game. Yeah. So both coaches are pissed, right? Yeah. Right. So nobody's happy. So the NBA figured out how to fix that because that used to be the member, yeah. the Pistons and the Bulls and yeah. all that, when the NBA games were 90 to 85, all right? So they fixed that. So I think the WNBA has an opportunity to take that and take it to another level to accentuate the talent that's coming into the league as opposed to stifle it. What about, what about the game as a whole, the women's game as a whole? The last couple of years, it's, you know, it's the growth in popularity, is that something you, you feel tangibly? Like, do you, do you feel it's growing? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I mean, the attention that's being paid on, uh, uh, on every women's sport, not just, uh, not just, you know, college basketball, not just the WNBA. Um, I think the, uh, 
the more once once it became okay to put a spotlight on a woman's game and I think last year's NCAA season you know and uh, a lot of what Caitlin Clark did uh, that brought a lot of attention to the game I think the the spotlight then started to go on not just that team, not just that player, but that team and that player and that team and that player. And then that sport. All right, let's 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 start showing more women's soccer games. Let's start talking more about the women's um, hockey league. You know, so all of a sudden these things become all part of the bigger picture. Uh, and then you get all the all the female athletes that won all the Olympic gold medals over there in Paris. So it just became... You know, like somebody lit a fire and it just spread. And I think we have to keep fanning the flames as we go forward here and don't let it, you know, don't let it die. Is that something you worry about in terms of let's build on this momentum? You could you could actually see it going backwards? No, you got to build on any, you got to build on momentum because um, things don't stay the same forever, right? So you reach a certain point and you've got momentum going, you've got to keep putting something underneath it. And because you're, you're going to keep putting something on top of it, right? So you better make sure that there's a solid base and you keep adding and keep adding and keep making sure that you're shoring up the base and then adding. Otherwise, it's going to collapse. And then we have to treat it a certain way. You know, I, I've never said we're better at Connecticut than any place else. But we are different at Connecticut because we've been dealing with this for 30 years. And we've been dealing with this and the unbelievable attention that comes with it for 30 years. This is all new to a lot of places. And so... We have to make sure that we help each other understand how to deal with all this. You know, it's uh, somebody told me a story about Napa Valley one time, and they said no one's allowed to make bad wine in Napa Valley because one bad bottle of wine from Napa Valley hurts the entire brand. Okay, so all of us in women's sports and women's basketball are responsible for that. We need to make sure that we're all really good at what we do so we keep adding to the brand, we don't damage the brand or hold it back in any way, shape, or form. Like, for instance, one thing, like, I see a lot of these players, like, hiding from the media when things don't go well. Well, that's not going to grow the game. That's not going to That's not going to help. You know, you can't avoid, you can't ask for a lot of attention and then avoid it when it's going to be negative attention. You're going to have to take both, right? You're going to have to handle the good and you're going to have to handle the bad. And I think we have so many great stories to tell in our game that it's okay if they pick on a couple bad ones. I mean, that's, that, that means they're really paying attention. And I like that. I like that. It's, it's okay to show your warts, right? Makes you human. Along those lines, you've had players over the years who have been transcendent, just not to the level of what we've seen lately. Uh, what, what's your sense on, on why it didn't happen sooner, why, why the women's game? didn't get the attention that maybe it should have five or ten years ago. Because you've had players who I, I think, you know, I think you would agree were, were, were worthy of that attention and got attention just not to this level. Um, yeah. Or was the world just not ready for it? Yeah. Um... I, I, I would say that's just the nature of that's just the nature of life, time, sports, history, availability, one two. Why did I have to watch the Sixers Celtics playoff games on tape delay the day after the game when I was in you know when I was in middle school and high school? You got to be kidding me, right? Now I can't on the t- turn on the TV any time of the day without having an NBA story. So the time wasn't right. Nobody cared. Nobody cared about football in Philadelphia or any place else. Right? We were a baseball country. And now we're an NFL country. So the times are usually going to dictate how things evolve. And the time wasn't right, I guess, for, to your point, my player, for a Diana Taurasi or a Maya Moore. You know, just like the time wasn't right 
for a pre-marriage, right? You know, if people were to cover Pete Maravich back then the way they covered Caitlin this year, Pete Maravich would be the greatest player in the history of organized sports <laughs> for what he did, right? So the times just are what they are now, and it's, and I've said this before, and people were like, look at me, it's okay that it didn't happen then, and we shouldn't go back and condemn those people that didn't cover it. Like, how dare you not cover that? You know, what took you so long? You know, you can't put a gun to people's head and force them to do anything. They're going to do it when they feel it's the right time for them to do it. And right now, people think they can make money off of women's sports. So there you have the attention. A little bit at a time. What came first? First, a little bit of attention, then a little more. Oh, now I can make money on it. And now a lot more attention. It's no different than what happened a lot of, in the Big East when we came into the Big East and started being really good the first time around. We were the only one putting money into women's basketball back then. And we kept winning and winning and winning. We started making a lot of money. And we started getting money from TV and ticket sales. And then all of a sudden, in the year 2000, we had nine teams in the NCAA tournament. And those nine schools were heavily invested in women's basketball. So, those players were born 20 years too soon. Gina, you know? kind of on that, with all the realignment conversations this summer, you guys are coming off an undefeated year. Just kind of where do you see the state of the Big East on the women's side and, and how you guys fit into it? Yeah, the, the whole conference, conference realignment thing, um, there's more... There's more people on the outside of it than there are on the inside of it, right? Um, the the two dominant uh, the two dominant conferences that are constantly in the news, you know, the Big Ten and the SEC. Um, the, I don't know that um, unless um, unless there's a concerted effort by everybody there's there's going to be constant separation between the top and even within those conferences the, the, the constant separation between the top 5, 6, 7, 8 and the bottom 12 because now you get to 20 teams what do you think all 20 of them are going to be equal there's going to be 10 maybe that are going to be here and the other 10 they're in it, they're in it for a check right so the more the more it's fractured, it'll get even more fractured as it moves along. Because people can't afford to play at that, at that poker table, so they have to create another table over here. And these people that are in that poker table are gonna continually up the ante so that they keep separating themselves from everybody else. I don't know how you fix that. We just have to be as good as we can be in our conference. The Big East has been dominant in men's basketball in spite of all the other stuff, the power five that they call that are four, whatever, and all that, four of the last, what, six? Four of the last eight men's national championships have been won by Big East School. So what does that mean for the Big East women? I think we have to invest in it more. And if we don't, then the same thing that's happened to a lot of other people that don't invest in it is gonna to happen to our league. We're going to keep investing in it at UConn. So um, I'm not worried about that part, but I think um, maybe that what I said about when you think you can make a return on your investment, you start to invest in it more. But how do you know if you can make a return if you don't invest in it first? So, Gino, is there a particular game you're looking Last forward to two. this season? Particular game that I'm looking forward to? Um, you know, I hope there's a game in, in April that we're in. Uh, but um, I can't pick one over the other because there's so many. Our non-conference games this year, if, if I didn't have a say in it, I would really be pissed. But, you know, um, the fact that I helped put that together and it evolved this way. So I don't know which game I'm... 
Uh, you'd probably ask me which games are you dreading. Uh, <laughs> that would probably be an easier question. Yeah, which, one, which, ones are which one of those? I'll give you about seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin Ashton and step into it. KK and Ashton in, into leadership role? No. <laughs> no. No. Hey, coach. They, 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 that, is not, you, th that is not part of their DNA right now. They, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. That's hopefully, hopefully they're still learning and paying attention from, you know, Paige and, uh, and Caitlin who have played a lot more basketball than they have. So that's a work in progress. Hey, Coach, with um, the pro sports entering, you know, still in that super team phase, would you rather see Paige go to a team that's already established or go to a team in the WNBA that she can kind of build like Caitlin did? Um, I don't know that she has a choice, number one. But if, you had a, if, you had, um, if you had a choice for her. Um. Uh, that's. I always think that players who players who go to a, a team that has a lot of talent when they come out of college are way better off than players who go to teams that are less talented. And the higher you're picked in the draft, generally speaking, the less talent that team's going to have when you get there. Um, I. I hope she goes to a team that it's that she is exactly what they need, whatever that team is. And she goes to an established team that's already good and already doing well, she'll have a huge impact. She goes to a team that has never been good and she makes them good, she'll have a huge impact. So um, Paige is going to be all right wherever she goes.